Hi, I'm Dylan from BR Consulting, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on some basic ZFS setup for our Proxmox server. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to log into your GUI for the Proxmox server, obviously, otherwise you're not going to be able to do much. So we're going to go here uh, to our individual node on which we want to create the pool. In this server, uh, we're going to go to the disk section. And this menu, if it's not expanded, you're going to want to expand it. Here you can see uh, we've got an SSD and two one terabyte disks. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use these two guys. So we're going to go to our ZFS menu and hit Create ZFS. So here you've got a few settings. First of all, obviously the name, I'm going to go with ZFS A. Uh, I like to use just simple nomenclatures. I usually go with ZFS A, ZFS B, C, D. Uh, and then we're going to set the RAID level. I'm going to set it to mirror in this case because I've got only two disks. Now if you had four disks, I'd probably use RAID 10. Um, but when it comes to RAID levels, it's, it's really going to depend on how many disks you have and what kind of redundancy setup you want. Uh, and, and it all depends on what trade-offs you want to have. In this case, I'm just going to use mirror for the sake of this tutorial. And then compression, I really recommend using LZ4. It's probably the best. Um, you can also select the order for the disks inside the pool. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then hit create. Once uh, it creates the pool, it's going to automatically add it to our list here and it's also going to add it automatically to our storage um, storage item list in the data center section so if we go here to data center and then storage we're going to see our zfs pool now we've finished creating the pool but we're actually going to want to create a mount point because otherwise you're not going to be able to put files in the actual pool so for that, you're going to want to go to the actual command line. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is go here to the shell in the node itself. And you're going to want to basically write this command, which is ZFS create minus O mount point equals. And here you're going to put the path where you want to put the mount point. And then here goes the pool name slash the, the mount point or data set name. In this case, I'm going to use the same pool name, but in caps lock. So just hit enter. And if we do ZFS list, it's going to show us the uh, pool mount point and then the actual data set mount point. Once we've done this, uh, if you want to check the status of the pool, you can either do zpool status on the console and it's going to give you the state, the scan and all the uh, disks in the pool itself if it has any errors. Or you can go back here and do a double click on the pool itself and it's going to show you basically the same data but parsed and in a very pretty GUI. Um, it's going to show you the disk tree and all of that. So once we've done this, what we want to do is add the actual mount point as a storage option. So we're going to go back to data center, into storage, and then hit add directory. And here we're going to do a unique ID. So I'm going to use the same name than the actual pool. And then we're going to add underscore MP as a suffix just to be able to identify it easily. And here we're going to put the path for the uh, mount point. So it's going to be what we put in the command itself. In terms of content, you want to you want to do. Uh, I usually do all of this these items, but if you want to, you can restrict it to whatever you'd like. Um, you can also restrict it, restrict it to a specific node uh, and set it as a shared storage. I'm not going to do that because we've got one node. And in backup retention, you can also change how many backups or which backups you keep. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as is because I don't have really any reason to change it. So I'm going to just hit add 
and we've got the man point. Now, as you can see here, if we go to the pool itself, we can only have VM disks and CT volumes. And if we go to the mount point, we can have backups, we can have VM disks, volumes, ISOs, CT templates, snippets, uh, and you can obviously also have common files. So if we basically go here to our console and we do uh, touch slash MNT ZFSA hello.txt, then edit the file. Hey, this is a test file. And then close it, save it, and do a list. You're going to be able to see that we've got this file here. So once we've done this, we have already created our pool and we've already created our mount point. Now, we're also going to do some tweaks to the config settings. So we're going to go to etc pve storage cfg and here in this section which is the mount point don't do it on the pool do it on the mount point careful with that we're going to hit uh, we're going to write is mount point 1 and make dir or mkdr uh, dir 0 so what this is going to do is it's going to tell proxmox not to create a directory if this is not mounted. Um, I've had some issues in the past where if the Z pool didn't mount before the PVE services, then it would create an empty volume there and you would basically have uh, the mount point in your root pool. So you wouldn't be using the disks. You would be using your original OS disk. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save, save this, and after modifying that, you're going to want to go to um, this file over here, which is um, pve statd.service, and you're going to want to modify this so that in the after argument section, it says pve cluster service space zfs hyphen mount dot service. What this is going to do is it's going to make the pve status daemon start after the ZFS mount service. So as to reduce the chances of having that issue that I mentioned. Um, once you've done that, you can save. And yeah, we're basically done. You can go ahead and use your pool and your mount point for whatever you'd like. Um, you can, for example, put a disk there. If you want to move it, you can move it to the mount point or the, uh, or the pool. I usually like to put the actual disks in the pool in raw format. You're not going to be able to access them as files, but it's usually better for performance if I'm not wrong. Basically that's it for the tutorial today. I hope you've enjoyed it and have a great day. Thank you for watching.